Hi guys, welcome to our Wednesday class for C2. I uh, hope you guys are doing good. Um, this video may be a little bit shorter than the other ones because we're going to focus on writing today. <laughs> I know your favorite, but we're going to do writing today. Um, but I don't know how long it's going to be, so I'm just going to warn you ahead of time it might be a little bit shorter. Um, but I do have more work for you at home that you can give to me. So. What I'd like you guys to do first is go in your books to page 88, okay? <laughs> so, page 88, obviously it's speaking, <clears throat> and we're not going to be able to really do the speaking together, but we're going to take advantage of that to practice more writing, okay? Um, also, if you are interested in practicing speaking, we have Skype sessions open. So, for example, um, my Skype, I think my Skype address is on the on the website for our school. But if not, if you want my Skype address, write to me um, on email and I can give it to you. I'm available from 6 to 7. Um, I can't be available for the whole hour, but I could be available for maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, and we could do the speaking part of the exam. That's absolutely fine. Um, so every night from six to seven, I'm available to do speaking practice. So if you're interested in that, let me know in um, in an email, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice the the writing bit kind of with, with the speaking bit, like fuse them together. So you have got several different pictures here on page 88. And they're all showing different aspects related to crime, okay? So, for example, in letter A, what is this? What do you think this is? This, I'm just going to tell you because I can't really have a conversation with you. So, this is um, a surveillance camera, or sometimes they call it a CCTV camera, okay? In B, this these are called riot police because these police officers... Um, keep everybody calm, and uh, try to prevent a huge crisis. Can you go over there, please? Thank you. Okay. Letter C. Um, I don't really know what this is. I think it's maybe that it's dangerous driving or something like that associated with youth. What about D? Well, obviously, that's the gun. Gun crime. E. Um, so you have lots of different newspapers, and they're all talking about, um, well, I don't know what they're talking about, but Newspapers report crimes daily. Usually, all you really see in newspapers are negative things or different types of crime. Um, and F. I don't know what this is. It looks to me like immigrants entering the U.S., which I don't know why it is a crime, but I think it depicts an aspect of what people think is is maybe a crime nowadays. I'm not entirely sure where these people are from. I don't really know. But anyway, you've got some pictures here. <clears throat> what I'd like you to do, writing, is in number one, it says discuss these questions. Okay. And it says in A, if you could change any laws on civil, on civil liberties in your country, which would you change and why? Um, and how would you change them? So civil liberties are, oh my God, sorry guys, you're just gonna have to bear with me with the dog, um, are rights or freedoms given to people. Okay, so if you could change any of these um, laws or civil liberties in your country, which would you change and how would you change them? Can you write that for me, please? And um, in B, if you could make any new laws affecting people's freedom of action and speech, what would you introduce and why? You don't have to write loads about this, but maybe, I don't know, three or four lines <laughs> per, um, per question. Okay, so once you've done that, um, the next thing I want you guys to do is have a look at number six. We're not going to listen to the speaking part, um, but again, if you'd like, we can speak on Skype. Thanks. Um, and we can, what can we do? We can practice the speaking part, okay? So what I'd like you to do now is in your notebook, in number six, um, <laughs> this is so hard, help, help. Why am I stuck with a three-year-old for weeks on end? Help. Anyway, let's continue. Um, number six, you have three different sentences and you need to discuss whether you agree or disagree with the statements. Um, and obviously say why. So do that in your notebook. 
Um, and you guys can send that to me for homework as well. And um, there's going to be kind of a lot of work in this class that you can send to me, um, hopefully before the next class on Monday, so I have time to correct it. Um, but it's good because you have a lot of stuff that you can work on. Okay. Now, what I'd like you guys to do now is have a look at the writing. So for the C2 exam, and even if you're not preparing the C2 exam, it's just good in general um, to learn how to write different types of things. Um, this one, we're going to be focusing on a report. Okay. So you have an exam question up here, and you have three questions that you need to answer, but we're going to do that together. Um, you don't need to write that down. Let me just turn to the correct page. This is pretty. Okay. So it says you recently took part in a project which aimed to reduce juvenile crime by providing a program of voluntary education and training courses for young offenders. You have been asked to write a report between 280 and 320 words for the local government on the impact of this program based on feedback from the questionnaires completed by course participants. In your report, you should describe the strengths and weaknesses of the program and make recommendations. Okay, so in A, it says what solutions have been implemented to tackle or deal with the problem of juvenile crime. So juvenile is like um, teenager crime, basically. Um, so what solutions have been implemented? Um, it says it in the second line here. Uh, program of voluntary education and training courses for young offenders um, to probably get them doing something so they're not bored and, and commit crimes, <clears throat> amongst other things. B, what ideas do you think would you would find in the report and how might they be organized? Um, what ideas could you find in the report? Let's have a look. Um, well, those are your own answers. There's no answers in the teacher's book. So you have to think about that one. But maybe, um, let's see. I don't know. Talking about why you think these programs could work, what could be advantages or disadvantages of them, mm, things like that. And what style do you think would be appropriate? Well, obviously, if it's a report, you're not writing to your best friend saying, hey, what's up? So it's going to be pretty formal. Okay. So here you've got a sample report. So this is really important um, because it's a sample. It is just showing you what structure you need to use. So when you write your report, it needs to be in the same structure because that's what they're looking for at C2 level. OK, so I'm going to give you guys a minute. Read this, please. OK, pause the video, read this and answer the questions A, B, C, D and E. OK, um, all right. So. Let's see. Okay. Um, now I assume you've read this. In A, are any of your ideas from number one mentioned? Um, what do you think? Are your ideas mentioned, the ones that you thought about, um, about different solutions and what kind of things you would find in the report? In B, how are the ideas organized? So they are organized with an introduction strengths, weaknesses, conclusions, and then something further, which is recommendations. How does the writer avoid repetition when presenting their findings? So avoid repetition. This is so important because it's, there's nothing more boring than reading the same word again and again and again in students' writings. Well, there are probably things that are more boring than that, but it's pretty boring, okay? Um, not at C2 level, but there are other times when I've read essays that have 17 occurrences of the word good or bad. I mean, there are other adjectives out there. Please use them. Um, but I'm sure that won't be a problem. For you guys. So, um, they use lots of different types of words. So, for example, instead of saying like teenagers all the time, you can say participants, attendees, um, the people surveyed, candidates a minority, the majority, 5% of, etc. So you need to use a large variety of words because you want this to be exciting. Well, not exciting, but you want it to be more interesting and not so repetitive, okay? Letter D, what is the function of the modal verbs in the recommendations? Okay, so here you've got recommendations, um, would be, so modal verbs would be would be, and then should, um, would advise, um, the function of these are to kind of uh, make 
their opinions softer. So instead of saying, do this, because that sounds really bossy and, you know, uh, well, maybe Americans don't have a problem with that, but British people don't like to be um, directly bossy. They kind of like to go around and um, be kind of passive about it. I don't know. Americans are really direct and bossy. So um, as a general rule, so maybe here in this case, because it's book is British, they want to make it softer and kind of have a recommendation um, of what you what you should do, but really saying do it. And E, what formal linking words does the writer use? So they use things like notwithstanding and albeit, um, which I don't really remember where they were. Notwithstanding and albeit. I don't know. You have to have a look. Let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah, here. Notwithstanding is there. Um, and albeit is right there. So these types of linking words are really important. Um, there are so many more, so please use those. Okay. So now that we've seen the structure a little bit, have a look at page 90. <clears throat> okay. So here in number three, it says, look at the sentences A to E. How does using each of the modal verbs affect the sentence? So A says a comprehensive ban on handguns would or could reduce crime levels. So would means it definitely, it definitely would do that. Um, and could means it's a possibility. Okay. Um, B, increasing jail sentences could or will act as more of a deterrent. Will means that this is the definite consequence of that. And um, could, again, it's a possibility. C, targeting drink drivers should or could see a drastic reduction in road accidents. So if, yeah, if you use could, again, it's a possibility. Um, and should means if you take these steps, this is the probable outcome. D, CCTV. Okay, so what I said before, um, surveillance cameras, CCTV cameras may or might make the street safer. I'm just looking at the student's book now because I feel that may and might are more or less exactly the same. Some other books have said that may and might have slight semantic differences, but I I really don't see them. I think it's pretty much the same. I think may is more formal and might is more informal, but that's about it. And E, tackling truancy at school. So truancy is when students don't attend school and they don't have permission to not attend school. Basically, they just don't show up. Um, so tackling truancy at school can or will will reduce the number of young offenders. So can means, yeah, again, possibility and will is definitely. OK, so what I'd like you guys to do now is have a look at number four. OK, and this is homework as well. So complete the sentences A to E with a suitable word. There may be more than one possible answer. So can you please finish number four and uh, fill in the gaps with words that you think are apt basically, and send it to me and I'll correct you. OK, what we're going to do now is in number five, we have some vocabulary before I'm going to go over what you need to do for the writing. OK, so. Um, oh no, where's my whiteboard? Okay, I don't have a whiteboard. So, hmm, we're gonna just do it by speaking and I'm gonna try to, where did that go? I'm gonna try to write it in my notebook, okay? So, for example, you have A to G where you need to put different words in the correct places. They give you a beginning to the word, which makes it really difficult to be honest, but, um, we're going to try. So pause the video now and uh, do exercise five. And then we're going to go over it together. And I'm going to try my best to write it in the notebook. OK, so let's just say A, B, C, D, E, F and G. OK, so the possibility in A, the possibility of eradicating crime seems what do you guys have I don't I don't know why I always ask you but I'm gonna make it a real class okay um the answer that it says in the book is insurmountable which means you can't overcome it so can you see that you can really see that in I'm just gonna write it and then I'll show you in surmountable mm, can you see this yeah you can see that okay insurmountable um 
The next one says, the recent riots have revealed shortcomings. Have you heard of that word before? Um, that just basically means like flaws. Shortcomings. Okay. Number, or letter C, the underlying problem is that the legislation legislation only touches the surface of the disadvantages that women face in society. Um, what did I say? The underlying problem only touches on, so underlying is the problem that exists underneath everything, and touches on is, um, makes reference to, okay, Oh, sorry, not touches on, only touches the surface. Okay, yeah, that's the same. Only, only like cracks the surface. D, no, D, sorry. The government is to inject $3 million into deprived areas to alleviate. Alleviate. I don't know if any of you guys got this right or not, because um, it's really difficult to... Um, make a word with only the first letter. Um, but good job to you if you did it. Um, what about E? Corporal punishment in school tended to exacerbate <clears throat> rather than discourage misbehavior. Okay. Exacerbate. Let me see that I spelled that right. Exacerbate. Exacerbate. Okay. Exacerbate is the first one. In, in letter E, that means to make something worse. Like for example, if you have a rash on your skin or like something itchy and you just scratch it all the time, you're exacerbating the problem. You're making it way worse. If you, if you just leave it alone, it won't bother you. But if you keep scratching, it's going to be really bad. Um, and the next one is discourage. Discourage is like try to get someone not to do something. Okay. F. His mother was asked to remove him because the staff never managed to get to grips, I think. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, grips. Get to grips with. That's a really good phrase, his behavior. To get get to grips with something means to um, begin to understand something, be able to do something successfully. Like when I was at school, I was never really that good at math when I was younger, but when I turned 16, 17, I started to really get to grips with math and I really liked it and I started to do a lot better. Um, so I, I started to understand it. I started to do really well in it. I started to be able to tackle it or deal with it a lot better. So that's what get to grips means. And G, um, it says, there seems to be a lack of viable, I think you guys have the same word in Spanish, viable, I'll show you in a minute. Solutions to uh, on offer to grapple with. Again, another word grapple with means to deal with. Um, the I think ongoing. Yeah, I got it as well. Ongoing problem of car theft. So those are the ones for G. Okay. If you have any questions about those, ask me please. Any questions? Honestly, like I'll get back to you within an hour because I'm always on my phone nowadays. So if you're confused about anything, let me know. Um, the last part of this, so this, this vocabulary is for you, not just to be like, oh yeah, cool, new vocabulary. No, you need to use it in your writings, okay? So your exam task, your homework, um, it doesn't need to be for Monday, but if you don't have anything else to do, which you might not, because we're at home all the time, you can give it to me on Monday. Um, but if not, you can also give it to me next week or whenever you can, okay? But this number six is what I want you to do for writing, um, plus all the other stuff I gave you, okay? Um, so follow these stages to write your report. Read, think, plan, write, and then check. It's really important to plan your writing first with just a few bullet points and ideas of what you could say. Um, so this is your task. The local government has recently installed CCTV cameras in your neighborhood. You have been asked to write a report of 280 to 320 words of local people's feelings about the installation. In your report, you should describe the positive and negative effects of the introduction of the CCTV cameras and suggest any other me measures that could be taken. Okay, guys, so 
Once you've done all that, that concludes unit eight, and we've still got nine, 10, 11, and 12. So we've still got quite a long way to go. Um, besides all of this homework, in, in the event that you feel you still want more work in English, I'm going to take a picture of this and email this to you, and you can do it if you want, okay? But it's not necessary. Eventually, I'd like you to do it um, in the next couple of weeks, but I'm just gonna give it to you now so you can have a look. It's to give you some more vocabulary words, and it's working a lot with affixes. So affixes, it says at the top, affixes are suffixes and prefixes, okay? So yeah, like I said, any questions, ask me. I hope you guys are well. I really miss our class, I'm, I'm sad that we can't be in the same room talking and we're just stuck in our house all the time. Hopefully this will end soon and we can have normal class again. Okay, bye guys. See you later on Monday, bye.